In this tutorial, we're going to uh, use a sort of uh, non-traditional modeling method uh, using animation to create this snail shell, just a spiral object. And this is uh, its almost completed form, I guess. Um, but you can see that the structure has been established and also uh, texture has been put on. So in part one of the tutorial, we'll look at um, creating the uh, object and then in part two we'll look at creating the um, shader for it. So we're going to be creating something like this. You can see the geometry is spiral, uh, spiraled around here. And what we're going to use to create it is something called under the animate menu uh, create animated sweep. So let me just uh, and then of course you can always create a snail. It's going in. Hello. Um, so let's just turn these both off for a second. And so we're going to create this um, just with a NURBS circle. So create NURBS primitive circle. So I'm going to leave it as is because I'll rotate it up. And now I am going to move its pivot point over. So hold down next, just to snap it to the grid point here, and then I will move the object over so its edge is right at the origin of the world here. Like usual, it's always best to model in the middle of the world. You can see I've got in my timeline 60 frames. So I am going to <clears throat> just animate the change of shape and position of this, or tra change the transform uh, attributes of this object so it's rotate, scale, and translate over time and then use that animation to create uh, an object. So first of all, let's just uh, freeze its transformations just to make things uh, pretty standard. And I'll delete its history. So the most basic thing we want to do is set a key in translate Y. Uh, so it hasn't moved at frame 1, but by frame 60 we want it to move up one unit. Set a key. I'm just using my shortcut for set uh, um, set key unselected. So simple animation. Uh, now we also want it to rotate in Y. So set a key here. Then at frame 60, let's have it rotate around completely twice. So have 720 degrees. So here's our animation now. I also want it to scale down over the course of the animation, so set a key scale at frame 1, and then at frame 60, uh, have it go down to 0. Scale. So we have got a circle that's shrinking, spinning, and going up. Let's just leave it at that. Uh, for what we're going to actually animate. But I want to give myself some flexibility later on. So I'm actually going to select all these extra things. Translate X, Translate Z, Rotate X and Z. And I'm going to set keys on these two, but I'm not going to change the values. So just leave them all at uh, 0 from frame 1 to frame 60. There's my animation. So now with the object selected, and let's give it a different name um, and call it Shell Profile. Oops. And we'll go to Animate, Create Animated Sweep, and just open up the options, make sure that it's on time slider or you can set start endpoints. Leave everything else the same and just make note that we're uh, the output geometry, geometry we're creating are is a NURB surface rather than a polygon surface, although you could do it uh, straight into a polygon surface and uh, get all the same benefits. <coughs> Excuse me. So just click Anim Sweep here, and there you go. You created a very basic uh, snail shell. Now it's not perfect, there's a bit of a hole in the middle, things don't fit together exactly the way I would like. So uh, we're going to edit this. Before we do that, let's just look at what's going on here. We've got this NURB surface here. It's called a lofted surface. It's called a lofted surface because, uh, let me just turn off my NURB surface visibility. So that that circle that we created went through its animation on every frame uh, at the state that it was in with all the animation that we made on it. Um, 
it made a copy of itself uh, at its new position, scale, and rotation. And then a surface was lofted from one to the next, to the next, to the next, and so on, to create the surface that we now see. However, because we created this with history turned on, we can uh, select that uh, initial curve that we used, the shell profile curve, um, and we can still make changes to the animation and thereby make changes to the structure of the surface that was created. So we go to Window, Animation Editors, Graph Editor, and so you can see all those things we set keys on, we have animation curves for now. So let's just look at one of them. Let's look at translate y. So how much the circle went over the course, it went up over the course of its animation. Just hit A to focus on here. So I can just grab the keyframe at frame 60 and move it down and move it up, and you can see that it's making changes to the nature of my shell. So maybe I wanted to move up a little bit more. You can see that it's a linear interpolation between the two, so it's just moving up at a constant rate over time. I can change the uh, the nature of the tangents and thereby change the nature of the interpolation. So let's say I wanted to ease into this point, so hopefully this point will, right now you can see the highest point is just above everything else, but I kind of wanted to start to lay down into this little cranny here. So if I flatten this curve by going to ease in, you can see it changes the nature of the animation and and the upward motion slows over time and we get a much flatter surface. So now I can grab this, move it down and sort of have it nestle into itself. That's kind of more what I was interested in. I can move it up a little bit. I can even add other keyframes in here. So if I think I need it, I can add another keyframe along this curve. I can move it up and then I can grab this one and move it down if I want to tilt that tip down a little bit. I want to sort of have it go into the shell a little more. So even though I didn't add a keyframe there originally, I can go in and add keyframes uh, wherever I want here. So that's good. Um, what else can we change here? I think the scale is fine. Maybe I, I uh, scale Y. Maybe I want it to flatten out a little bit earlier. So I could flatten the curve. That doesn't look really good. So I am going to go back to linear curves. And maybe I'll just add another keyframe in here. And I don't know if, how this is going to work exactly, but all you can do is try, right? So maybe I want it to get down to 0 and Y a little bit earlier than it gets down to 0 and scale X and Z. So it kind of flattens out and maybe get that started a little earlier. a linear curve too. Maybe make that one linear just to see. So I can just change the nature of the end bit there a little bit. Um, I'm not sure if I really like it that much, but you can always go in and change it. Maybe translate Y now. I'll tuck this end down a little bit. Maybe the whole thing I'll just tuck in a little bit. Yep, okay, so that's good. Now, we've got the opening uh, nice and wide because uh, it was moving up uh, as it went around its animation, so it gives us a little more space in here. But maybe I want to turn this up out a little bit so it's kind of more on the bias on an angle here. So what would that be? I'll just uh, hit rotate. So that would be rotate in X. So go to rotate next. And this is another one of the ones that I set keyframes on, but I didn't change the value. So maybe I wanted to start rotate it out a little bit more. So I can just grab the initial keyframe and rotate it up. You can see it's taking a long time to make any changes. And that's because if you look at the units here, it's 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, but we're talking about degrees here. So it's between 0 and 360 rather than 0 and 1, um, like it is for a lot of our other um, attributes that we're changing. So I'll just, scale, I'll just zoom out a bit, give myself a little more room so I can change the nature of this, hit A. Again, maybe I want to flatten these curves. So I can open up the hole like that a little bit more. And I could even put a keyframe in here, maybe just to just to change how how this works. Let's 
Oops, I'm going to break this tangent. It's actually a very interesting way to work on something. That looks a little bit too wide open to me. Maybe move it down a little bit more. Anyway, so that's giving me something interesting. And I can go on and do that for all of these sort of things. But um, one thing I'm going to change is I want to change the shape of the opening. But I don't want to actually change the shape of the initial curve that I'm working on. So if I just right click and go to control vertex and grab one of these CVs and drag it out. Oops, wrong one. Make sure I've got the right object selected. I'm trying to select that initial curve. Probably the best thing to do is go into the outliner and select it. My original NURB circle, just right click, go to control vertex. But if I try and change its shape, it changes the shape of all the other... This is kind of a neat way to make a Nautilus-looking shell. It's kind of flatter that way. So you can change the shape of the curve after the fact, too, to make interesting effects. But that's not what I want to do right now. Um, I just want to change the shape of the opening. So rather than grabbing this NURBS um, circle, and I'm going to... Oops. Got a key on here by accident. Just going to turn off its visibility, and then I'm going to select the first Oh, I realize that I'm working on the wrong object here. <laughs> I've used this scene for creating the shell a couple of times, so I've got a few curves that are uh, building different shells. Anyway, um, so I'm in snapshots, three groups. So I can select the first curve here and I can go into control vertex and I can just grab these and I can open it up if I want to change the shape of the opening here. So let's say I want to make it look a little more like a, like a trumpet bell, open it up like that, get that curve in there. Because all the history is still on, I can do that. So that's good. I'm happy with the way it looks. Now I can go in and just go to object mode and I can grab my shell and just move it and rotate it to where I want to go. So I'm actually grabbing the NURB surface here and not any of the curves. I'm just going to leave the curves where they are and put it into position like it would be if it were had a snail inside it, I guess. Maybe it's rotated like that a little bit. But anyway, uh, even though I've moved it, um, the history still remains. I can go in and grab any of the curves and change their shape. Or I can go in and grab that original um, shell profile and still change the animation on it. And it will update. Okay, so it gives us a lot of flexibility. Actually, now that I look at that, that looks kind of funny. That's my scale Y thing that I created there. It's a bit of a harsh drop off there. Anyway, we'll leave it something like that. So we're using animation and history to create this interesting object. And what we'll do in the next tutorial is come back and look at uh, texturing the object and taking advantage of the built-in um, NURBS UV map. Okay, thanks.